Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. United Kingdom general election 2015. The United Kingdom general election of the 7th of May 2015 elected 650 members to the British House of Commons. It was the first general election at the end of a fixed-term parliament. Local elections took place in most of the same day. Polls and commentators had predicted the outcome would be too close to call and would result in a second hung parliament similar to the 2010 election. Opinion polls were eventually proven to have underestimated the conservative voters they won a surprise outright majority, which bore resemblance to their victory in the 1992 general election. Having governed in coalition with the Liberal Democrats since 2010, the Conservatives won 330 seats and 36.9% of the vote, this time winning a working majority of 12. The British Polling Council began an inquiry into the substantial variance between opinion polls and the actual result, forming the first Conservative majority government since 1992. David Cameron became the first Prime Minister to continue in office immediately after a term of at least four years with a larger popular vote share since 1900, and the only Prime Minister other than Margaret Thatcher to continue in office immediately after a term of at least four years, with a greater number of seats. The Labour Party, led by Ed Miliband, saw a small increase in its vote share to 30.4 percent, but incurred a net loss of seats to return 232 MPs. This was its lowest seat tally since the 1987 election. Senior Labour shadow cabinet members, notably Ed Balls, Douglas Alexander, and Scottish Labour leader Jim Murphy, were defeated. The Scottish National Party, enjoying a surge in support since the 2014 Scottish independence referendum, recorded a number of huge swings of over 30% from Labour, as it won 56 of the 59 Scottish seats. To become the third largest party in the Commons, the Liberal Democrats, led by outgoing Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, had their worst results since being formed in 1988, holding just eight out of their previous 57 seats with Cabinet Ministers Vince Cable, Ed Davey, and Danny Alexander losing their seats. The UK Independence Party came third in terms of votes, with 12.6%, but only won one seat, with party leader Nigel Farage failing to win the seat of South Thanet. The Green Party won its highest ever share of the vote, with 3.8%, and held Brighton Pavilion with an increased majority, though did not win any additional seats. Labour's Miliband and Murphy resigned, as did Clegg. Farage claimed that his resignation was rejected by his party, and he remained in post. In Northern Ireland, the Ulster Unionist Party returned to the Commons, with two MPs after a five-year absence, while the Alliance Party lost its only seat despite an increase in total vote share. The Conservative majority meant that Cameron was able to fulfil a manifesto commitment to renegotiate British membership of the European Union. That renegotiation was followed by a referendum in June 2016, which resulted in the British people voting to leave the EU and led to the resignation of Cameron as Prime Minister. The new Prime Minister, Theresa May, called in April 2017 for a fresh general election with the stated aim of securing a majority. For her Brexit negotiations, it received parliamentary approval and was scheduled for 8 June 2017. Election process The Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2011 led to the dissolution of the 55th Parliament on 30 March 2015, and the scheduling of the election on 7 May, the House of Commons not having voted for an earlier date. 
there were local elections on the same day in most of England, with the exception of Greater London. No other elections were scheduled to take place in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, apart from any local by-elections. All British, Irish, and Commonwealth citizens over the age of 18 on the date of the election were permitted to vote. In general elections, voting takes place in all parliamentary constituencies of the United Kingdom to elect members of Parliament to seats in the House of Commons, the dominant House of Parliament. Each parliamentary constituency of the United Kingdom elects one MP to the House of Commons using the, the first-past-the-post system. If one party obtains a majority of seats, then the party is entitled to form the government. If the election results in no single party having a majority, then there is a hung parliament. In this case, the options for forming the government are either a minority government or a coalition government. Although the Conservative Party planned the number of parliamentary seats to be reduced from 650, to 600. Through the sixth periodic review of Westminster constituencies under the Parliamentary Voting System and Constituencies Act 2011, the review of constituencies and reduction in seats was delayed by the Electoral Registration and Administration Act 2013 amending the 2011 Act. The next boundary review is now set to take place in 2018. Thus, the 2015 general election was contested using the same constituencies and boundaries as in 2010. Of the 650 constituencies, 533 are in England, 59 in Scotland, 40 in Wales and 18 in Northern Ireland. In addition, the 2011 Act mandated a referendum in 2011 on changing from the current, first past the post, system to an alternative vote system for elections. To the Commons, the Conservative Liberal Democrat Coalition Agreement committed the coalition government to search for a referendum. The referendum was held in May 2011 and resulted in the retention of the existing voting system. Before the previous general election the Liberal Democrats had pledged to change the voting system, and the Labour Party pledged to have a referendum about any such change. The Conservatives, however, promised to keep the first-past-the-post system, but to reduce the number of constituencies by 10%. Liberal Democrat plans were to reduce the number of MPs to 500, and for them to be elected using a proportional system. Ministers increased the amount of money that parties and candidates were allowed to spend on the election by 23%, a move decided against Electoral Commission advice. The election saw the first cap on spending by parties in individual constituencies. During the 100 days before Parliament's dissolution on 30 March, £30,700, plus a per voter allowance of 9p in county constituencies and 6p in borough seats, an additional voter allowance of more than £8,700 is available after the dissolution of Parliament. UK political parties spent £31.1 metre in the 2010 general election, of which the Conservative Party spent 53%, the Labour Party spent 25%, and the Liberal Democrats 15%. This was the first UK general election to use individual rather than household voter registration. Date of the election Bath on 7 May 2015, an election is called following the dissolution of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. The 2015 general election was the first to be held under the provisions of the Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2011. Prior to this, the power to dissolve Parliament was a royal prerogative, exercised by the Sovereign on the advice of the Prime Minister. 
under the provisions of the Septennial Act 1716, as amended by the Parliament Act 1911. An election had to be announced on or before the fifth anniversary of the beginning of the previous Parliament. Barring exceptional circumstances, no sovereign had refused a request for dissolution since the beginning of the 20th century, and the practice had devolved that a prime minister would typically call a general election to be held at a tactically convenient time within the final two years of a parliament's lifespan. To maximize the chance of an electoral victory for his or her party, Prior to the 2010 general election, the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats pledged to introduce fixed-term elections. As part of the Conservative-Liberal Democrat coalition agreement, the Cameron Ministry agreed to support legislation for fixed-term parliaments, with the date of the next general election being 7 May 2015. This resulted in the Fixed-Term Parliaments Act 2011, which removed the Prime Minister's power to advise the monarch to call an early election. The Act only permits an early dissolution if Parliament votes for one by a two-thirds supermajority, or if a vote of no confidence is passed by a majority, and no new government is subsequently formed within 14 days. However, the Prime Minister had the power, by order made by statutory instrument under Section 1 of the Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2011, to fix the polling day to be up to two months later than 7 May 2015. Such a statutory instrument must be approved by each House of Parliament. Under Section 14 of the Electoral Registration and Administration Act 2013, the Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2011 was amended to extend the period between the dissolution of Parliament and the following general election polling day from 17 to 25 working days. This had the effect of moving forward the date of the dissolution of the Parliament to 30 March 2015. MPs not standing for re-election while at the previous election there had been a record 148 MPs not standing for re-election, the 2015 election saw 90 MPs standing down. These comprised 38 Conservative, 37 Labour, 10 Liberal Democrat, 3 Independent, 1 Shin Fiacutian and 1 Plaid Cymru MP. The highest profile members of Parliament leaving were Gordon Brown, a former Prime Minister, leader of the Labour Party and Chancellor of the Exchequer, and William Hague, the outgoing first Secretary of State and leader of the House of Commons, and former Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, leader of the Conservative Party and leader of the opposition, alongside Brown and Hague. 17 former cabinet ministers stood down at the election, including Stephen Dorrell, Jack Straw, Alistair Darling, David Blunkett, Sir Malcolm Rifkind and Dame Tessa Jowell. The highest profile Liberal Democrat to stand down was former leader So Menzies Campbell, while the longest-serving MP Sir Peter Tapsell also retired, having served from 1959 to 1964 and then continuously since the 1966 general election. Contesting political parties and candidates Woking showing opening hours of polling stations, including the advice that people queuing outside polling stations at 10.00 p.m. will be entitled to apply for a ballot paper. Overview the deadline for standing for the general election. The Electoral Commission's register of political parties included 428 political parties registered in Great Britain, and 36 in Northern Ireland. Candidates who did not belong to a registered party could use an independent label or no label at all. 
the Conservative Party and the Labour Party had been the two biggest parties since 1922, and had supplied all UK Prime Ministers since 1935. Polls predicted that these parties would together receive between 65% and 75% of votes, and would together win between 80% and 85% of seats, and that, as such, the leader of one of those parties would be the Prime Minister after the election. The Liberal Democrats had been the third party in the UK for many years, but as described by various commentators, other parties had risen relative to the Liberal Democrats. Since the 2010 election, the Economist described a familiar two-and-a-half party system that appears to be breaking down with the rise of the United Kingdom Independence Party, the Greens, and the Scottish National Party, Newsnight, and The Economist described the country as moving into a six-party system, with the Liberal Democrats, SNP, UKIP and Greens all being significant. Ofcom, in the role regulating election coverage in the UK, ruled that, for the general election, and local elections in May 2015, the major parties in Great Britain were the Conservatives, Labour, and Liberal Democrats, with UKIP a major party in England and Wales, the SNP a major party in Scotland, and Plaid Cymru in Wales, and that the Greens were not a major party. The BBC's guidelines were similar, but excluded UKIP from the category of larger parties in Great Britain and instead stated that UKIP should be given appropriate levels of coverage and output to which the largest parties contribute and, on some occasions, similar levels of coverage. Seven parties participated in the election leadership debates. Great Britain-based David Cameron stood for a second term in office, leader of the opposition and leader of the Labour Party after winning a leadership election against his brother David Miliband, Nick Clegg, and the Liberal Democrats showed a great fall in the polls after entering a coalition government with the Conservatives. UK Independence Party leader Nigel Farage stood in the South Thanet constituency. Nicola Sturgeon is the fifth First Minister of Scotland and the leader of the Scottish National Party, in office since 2014. She is the first woman to hold either position. Natalie Bennett, leader of the Green Party of England and Wales. She contested, in Hoban and St Pancras, the main Great Britain-based parties. Several parties operate in Northern Ireland only which has a mainly separate political culture, are listed below in order of seats being contested. Conservative Party, led by David Cameron, the Prime Minister. The Conservative Party was the larger party in the coalition government, having won the most seats. At the 2010 election, the party stood in 647 seats. Labour Party, led by Ed Miliband, the leader of the opposition, Labour had been in power from 1997 to 2010. The party constituted Her Majesty's most loyal opposition after the 2010 election, having won 258 seats. It stood in 631 of Great Britain's 632 constituencies, missing only the Speaker's seat. Liberal Democrats, led by Nick Clegg, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Liberal Democrats were the junior member of the 2010-15 coalition government, having won 57 seats. They contested the same 631 seats as the Labour Party. UK Independence Party, led by Nigel Farage, a member of the European Parliament, who had not previously been in Parliament, but was standing in South Thanet in the general election. UKIP won the fourth most votes at the 2010 election, but failed to win any seats. It subsequently won two seats at by-elections in 2014, both having been sitting Conservative MPs who resigned from the party. 
stood down voluntarily from their seat to fight a by-election, and won it for the new party, and won the highest share of votes at the 2014 European elections. It contested 624 seats across the United Kingdom. Green parties, too distinct. But cooperating Green parties operate in Great Britain, the Green Party of England and Wales, and the Scottish Green Party, with opinion polling generally making no distinction between the two. The Green Party of England and Wales is led by Natalie Bennett, who had not previously been elected to Westminster, but stood in Hoburn and St Pancras at the general election. The GPW won the fourth largest share of votes in the 2014 European elections, ahead of the Liberal Democrats. The Scottish Green Party is co-led by Patrick Carvey MSP and councillor Maggie Chapman, neither of whom were standing for election to Westminster. Caroline Lucas was elected as the only Green MP in 2010 in which the two parties received a combined 1% of the vote and were 7th overall. The Greens stood in 568 seats in Great Britain. Scottish National Party, led by Nicola Sturgeon, who is First Minister of Scotland and did not stand in the general election. The SNP only contested seats in Scotland and stood in all 59 Scottish constituencies. The party received the second most votes in Scotland and sixth most overall in 2010, winning six seats. It won the 2011 election to the Scottish Parliament and had a surge of support. Since the Scottish independence referendum in September the 2014, in which it was the main political party behind the losing Yes campaign, most projections suggested that it would be the third largest party overall after the 2015 election, in terms of seats won, overtaking the Liberal Democrats. Plaid Cymru, led by Leanne Wood, who is a member of the Welsh Assembly and did not stand in the general election. Plaid Cymru organises only in Wales, where it contested all 40 Welsh constituencies. The party has three MPs and was fourth in Wales by vote share in 2010, later finishing third in the 2011 Welsh Assembly elections. Minor parties Dozens of other minor parties stood in Great Britain. The Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition founded as an electoral alliance of socialist parties in 2010, had 135 candidates, and was the only other party to have more than 40 candidates. Respect came into the election, with one MP, who was elected at the 2012 Bradford West by election, but stood just four candidates. The British National Party, which finished fifth, with 1.9% of the vote for its 338 candidates at the 2010 general election, stood only eight candidates following a collapse in support. 753 other candidates stood at the general election, including all independents, Northern Ireland-based party candidates, and candidates from other parties. Northern Ireland the main parties in Northern Ireland described by Ofcom, the BBC and others in alphabetical order were Alliance Party of Northern Ireland The Alliance Party had one MP, Naomi Long, who had been elected for the first time in 2010. It was fifth in the 2010 election, by vote share, fifth overall in 2011 and sixth in 2014. Alliance has a relationship with the Liberal Democrats in Great Britain, the party's former leader sits in the House of Lords as a Liberal Democrat. But Alliance's one MP elected in 2010 Saturday on the opposition benches in the Commons and not with the Liberal Democrats on the government benches. The party contested all 18 Northern Irish constituencies in 2015. Democratic Unionist Party, the DUP, won eight seats in 2010. 
making it the largest Northern Ireland political party, and the fourth biggest in the UK as a whole. The party also won the 2011 Northern Ireland Assembly election, but was second in the 2014 European election. It contested 16 Northern Irish constituencies, having entered into an electoral pact with the Ulster Unionist Party in the remaining two. Sinefia Qutien, Sinefia Qutien won the most votes in Northern Ireland in 2010, but came second in seats, winning five constituencies. It was second in the 2011 Assembly elections, but first in the 2014 European elections. Sinefia Qutien follows an abstentionist policy with respect to the Commons, and has never so far taken its seats there. The party also operates in the Republic of Ireland, where it does take seats in Parliament. It was standing in all 18 Northern Irish constituencies. Michelle Gildenew lost her seat in 2015, which she had held by only four votes in 2010, thus reducing the SFMPs from five to four. Social Democratic and Labour Party, the SDLP was third in terms of votes and seats in the 2010 and 2011 elections, and fourth in the 2014 European elections. Prior to dissolution, the party had three MPs. The SDLP has a relationship with the Labour Party in Great Britain, with SDLP MPs generally following the Labour whip. The party was expected to have supported Labour in the event of a hung parliament and contested all 18 constituencies. At the election, Ulster Unionist Party, in 2010 the UUP, shared an electoral alliance with the Conservative Party, and finished fourth in terms of votes in Northern Ireland, but won no seats. The party has one MEP, having placed third in the 2014 European elections. It was fourth in the 2011 Assembly elections. The UUP contested 15 seats. The party did not run in two seats because of its electoral pact with the DUP, and also did not nominate a candidate against former UUP member and incumbent independent MP Sylvia Herman. Smaller parties in Northern Ireland included traditional Unionist voice and the Green Party in Northern Ireland. In 2015 TUV and the Greens each held one seat in the Legislative Assembly. The North Down seat was retained by independent Sylvia Herman. The Northern Ireland Conservatives and UKIP fielded candidates, whereas Labour and the Liberal Democrats do not contest elections in Northern Ireland. Pacts and possible coalitions Coalitions have been rare in the United Kingdom, because the first-past-the-post system has usually led to one party winning an overall majority in the Commons. However, with the outgoing government being a coalition and with opinion polls not showing a large or consistent lead for any one party, there was much discussion about possible post-election coalitions or other arrangements, such as confidence and supply agreements. Some UK political parties that only stand in part of the country have reciprocal relationships with parties standing in other parts of the country. These include Labour and SDLP Liberal Democrats and Alliance SNP and Plaid Cymru. Plaid Cymru also recommended supporters in England to vote Green, while the SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon said she would vote for Plaid Cymru were she in Wales, and Green were she in England, Green Party of England and Wales, Scottish Greens, and the Green Party in Northern Ireland on 17 March 2015 the Democratic Unionist Party and the Ulster Unionist Party agreed an election pact, whereby the DUP would not stand candidates in Fermanagh and South Tyrone and in Newry and Armagh. In return, the UUP would stand aside in Belfast East and Belfast North.
The SDLP rejected a similar pact suggested by Xi and Feqian to try to ensure that an agreed nationalist would win that constituency. The DUP also called on voters in Scotland to support whichever pro-union candidate was best placed to beat the SNP. Candidates the deadline for parties and individuals to file candidate nomination papers to the acting returning officer was 4 p.m. on 9 April 2015. The total number of candidates was 3,971, the second highest number in history, slightly down from the record 4,150 candidates at the last election in 2010. There were a record number of female candidates standing in terms of both absolute numbers and percentage of candidates, 1020 in 2015, up from 854 in 2010. The proportion of female candidates for major parties ranged from 41% of Alliance Party candidates to 12% of UKIP candidates, according to UCL's Parliamentary Candidates UK project the major parties had the following percentages of Black and ethnic minority candidates, the Conservatives 11%, the Liberal Democrats 10%, Labour 9%, UKIP 6%, the Greens 4%. The average age of the candidates for the seven major parties was 45. The youngest candidates were all aged 18, Solomon Curtis, Neve McCarthy, Michael Burroughs, Declan Lloyd, and Laura Jane Rossington. The oldest candidate was Doris Sosson, 84, of the Elderly Persons Independent Party, who was standing in Ilford North. Other candidates aged over 80 included three long-serving Labour MPs standing for re-election, Sir Gerald Kaufman. Dennis Skinner and David Winnick. A number of candidates, including two for Labour and two for UKIP, were suspended from their respective parties after nominations were closed. Independent candidate Ronnie Carroll died after nominations were closed. Possibility of the Hung Parliament Hung parliaments have been unusual in post-war British political history, but with the outgoing government a coalition and opinion polls not showing a larger consistent lead for any one party, it was widely expected and predicted throughout the election campaign that no party would gain an overall majority, which could have led to a new coalition or other arrangements such as confidence and supply agreements. This was also associated with a rise in multi-party politics, with increased support for UKIP, the SNP and the Greens. The question of what the different parties would do in the event of a hung result dominated much of the campaign. Smaller parties focused on the power this would bring them in negotiations. Labour and the Conservatives both insisted that they were working towards winning a majority government, while they were also reported to be preparing for the possibility of a second election in the year. In practice, Labour were prepared to make a broad offer to the Liberal Democrats in the event of a hung parliament. Most predictions saw Labour as having more potential support in Parliament than the Conservatives with several parties, notably the SNP, having committed to keeping out a Conservative government. Conservative campaigning sought to highlight what they described as the dangers of a minority Labour administration supported by the SNP. This proved effective at dominating the agenda of the campaign and at motivating voters to support them. The Conservative victory was widely put down to the success of the anti-Labour SNP warnings, according to a BBC article and others. Labour, in reaction, produced ever stronger denials that they would cooperate with the SNP after the election. The Labour, Conservative, 
and Liberal Democrat parties rejected the idea of a coalition with the SNP. This was particularly notable for Labour, to whom the SNP had previously offered support. Their manifesto stated that the SNP will never put the Tories into power. Instead, if there is an anti-Tory majority after the election, we will offer to work with other parties to keep the Tories out. SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon later confirmed in the Scottish leaders' debate on STV that she was prepared to help make Ed Miliband Prime Minister. However, on 26 April, Miliband ruled out a confidence and supply arrangement with the SNP too. Miliband's comments suggested to many that he was working towards forming a minority government. The Liberal Democrats said that they would talk first to whichever party won the most seats. They later campaigned on being a stabilizing influence should either the Conservatives or Labour fall short of a majority, with the slogan, We will bring a heart to a Conservative government and a brain to a Labour one. Both Labour and the Liberal Democrats ruled out coalitions with UKIP. Ruth Davidson, leader of the Scottish Conservatives, asked about a deal with UKIP in the Scottish leaders' debate, replied, no deals with UKIP. She continued that her preference and the Prime Minister's preference in a hung parliament was for a minority Conservative government. UKIP say they could support a minority Conservative government through a confidence and supply arrangement in return for a referendum on EU membership before Christmas 2015. They also spoke of the DUP joining UKIP in this arrangement. UKIP and DUP said they would work together in Parliament. The DUP welcomed the possibility of a hung Parliament and the influence that this would bring them. The party's deputy leader, Nigel Dodds, said the party could work with the Conservatives or Labour, but that the party is not interested in a full-blown coalition government. Their leader, Peter Robinson, said that the DEUP would talk first to whichever party wins the most seats. The DEUP said they wanted, for their support, a commitment to 2% defence spending, a referendum on EU membership, and a reversal of the under-occupation penalty. They oppose the SNP being involved in government. The UUP also indicated that they would not work with the SNP if it wanted another independence referendum in Scotland. The Green Party of England and Wales, Plaid Cymru, and the Scottish National Party all ruled out working with the Conservatives, and agreed to work together, wherever possible, to counter austerity. Each would also make it a condition of any agreement. With Labour that Trident nuclear weapons was not replaced, the Green Party of England and Wales stated that austerity is a red line. Both Plaid Cymru and the Green Party stated a preference for a confidence and supply arrangement with Labour. Rather than a coalition, the leader of the SDLP, Alistair MacDonnell, said, we will be the left of centre backbone of a Labour administration, and that the SDLP will categorically refuse to support David Cameron and the Conservative Party. Shin Effie Akutayen reiterated their abstentionist stance. In the event, the Conservatives did secure an overall majority, rendering much of the speculation and positioning moot. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.